My name's Lane, born and bred in Taranaki. I've got four children. Tipani is my eldest son, he's 13. He is very cautious, diplomatic, very funny, and very helpful. Kaya is 11, loves sport. That's his number one. He's intelligent. He's affectionate. Atiyah is nine. Wow, she is solid. She's awesome. Kind, thoughtful and generous and creative. Mahia is seven. Mahia is honest, very open, but Mahia is also extremely affectionate. I've always really enjoyed watching their development and them growing into their own little individual human being. It's pretty amazing. And they're so incredibly different. Oh, it's eight o'clock, guys. Ted, do you want me to do your hair? No. Have you packed your lunch? As a family, it's crazy, hectic, busy, but it works. You have to work as a team. We all help each other. Whereabouts is your bag? Should be in the cupboard, son. They help me as much as I help them. Tiffany is the big brother. He gets up, gets dressed, has breakfast, packs his bag, brush teeth, I'm done. He has to help the other children. I'm trying to get ready for work, I'm trying to do laundry, I'm trying to quickly catch up on some housework, so he can do that. That's his role. I can go the socks off the bench. Yep. So the kid's dad lives in Australia and he comes over to visit every year. When I fell pregnant with Tipene, we moved out to a little Aboriginal community called Balgo in Western Australia. We eventually got his eyes checked when he was two only after he'd had accidents where he literally walked into things and smashed all his teeth and it was quite hardcore. And all they said was that he needed glasses. And so that's all I thought was that he just needed glasses and that's fine. Then the next children came along and they were fine. And then Mahi came along and I went, oh, he's doing the same things as Tipene. Then Tipene turned eight and they said, his vision should have stopped worsening. And if anything, it should be getting better. So we might just send you to an ophthalmologist. At the end of the day, they sat me down and just told me, Tiffany's going blind. When they diagnosed Tiffany, he said, if this is the issue with Tiffany, no doubt the little one will have it too. But we had no idea exactly what their visual acuity was at that stage. When I first started looking for a house, I was trying to find a nice flat section and I had lots of ideas as to what they needed. So now we've got a section that's really uneven, lots of dangers, stairs, a slippery driveway, and they're fine. 66 is perfect vision. 660 is legally blind. Mahia is 672. You'd probably get a bit of an idea of Mahia's vision if you look through toilet rolls and you put bubble wrap over top. Besides peripheral vision, the boys don't have night vision, so it's rod cone dystrophy. So your rods control your peripheral vision and your night vision. Why do you think that happened, Mahia? I don't know. I'm not sure. Were you focused? Yes. Or did you lose your focus somehow? I went through a bit of a grieving process and I kept thinking of things that they'll miss out on because I've always had really good vision. And then I thought, oh, I wish I was a millionaire and I could take them around the world and give them all these visual memories. And I still do. We as a family, me and my sister and my mum, are pretty focused on trying to give them as many visual memories as possible. So now, Mahia, I thought you might like to do some brailing. 
to do the alphabet, just as another bit of a finger warm-up, OK? See how far she can go. And Mahia, you know, he's 672. He's a lot worse than Tipene. So it came on pretty hardcore for him. Fantastic. Well done. He 100% needs to learn Braille, and he needs his cane. We look at developing his tactile senses, so then he can explore using his hands, and that helps him then move on to his Braille. So what's this page all about? A uh, train is big. Good boy. A uh, boat is big. A uh, tarantula is big. Very good. Good finding the words. A uh, tank is big. Great. I actually share the role with another resource teacher of vision and we see him every day now, so he gets half an hour braille a day and that's out of the classroom environment and then for the rest of the time he's back in being just one of the kids. I can't imagine what it's like to have such a small field of vision and even that's, you know, not very clear. So. I forget at times that he has got low vision. He continues to impress me all the time, and, and I learn a lot from him. Use your cane, sweep it. I can see a cone over here, Ma, here. And just keeping Lane in the picture of what we are doing so then she can support at home as well. Cane up, then you follow. It's OK, good Ma here. How about we go back into that little room and we'll put the cane away. I work at Tūtama Wahine or Taranaki and we're a Kopapa Māori common good organisation. All the staff, they all know my situation. They know I'm by myself with the kids, so they're super supportive. They work with lots of whānau that have one parent situations. And then the added complexity of having Tipene and Mahia losing their sight. She's our financial administrator, so she keeps us all on track. All the important things, make sure everyone gets paid. She actually brings a lot of compassion and empathy to her role in working behind the scenes to help families. I think she is extremely resilient and has a vision for her whānau, actually. I don't have to own lots of stuff and I don't have to have a big flash house and definitely not a flash car. <laughs> um, but amazing children, awesome whānau and a workplace like this, that's really important. You have made Mama so proud over the last year. You've never oh. stopped trying with everything you play touch, even though it's challenging for you. Your abilities, my beautiful boy. <laughs> you are strong and loving. I love that you give everything a go and persevere. You're awesome on your bike and enjoy long rides. You're getting really fast in a go-kart too. Wait. Yes! Oh. It's the thorn. Costumes. Emma. Oh. Oh. Yay! Oh. Tia will run around after Mahia and she's really, really hyper aware of what's going on. Yeah, you know, she'll miss out on her play to make sure that Mahia's okay. She's very patient with him, really patient, which you have to be. He uses it all up. She goes over and above. Mahi. Can you tell us what you're making? I'm making a pillowcase for Mahia because I didn't make him a card. But you can't find them in here because my hair is not in here anymore. This is our. And then he's up there. 
I try really hard to be hands off so that they can learn and explore and discover, but I'm not, not really, because I am always there and I need to know everything. I'm nosy. I can't see out from here. I can't. There, yeah, there, yeah. mm -hmm. there. And then out. Oh, so this is just Ford. Um, I made something for you for your birthday because I didn't make you a card. <laughs> and it's a pillow. Do you want it? Yes. Thank what you. you. Thanks, Sam. It's cool. Wait, how much days? What did it take me? Yeah. <sighs> Two. Two. Has anybody got any ideas about what the Maori name of Wellington might be? I don't know how to describe this, but I've had this question so many times. It's way better than my hair's. My peripheral is way better than my hair's. All right, tips. Hold on, mate. Which, which angle is that? But I know that it's getting worse, and then it'll get better, and then it'll get worse. With Tipinet in general, at any school that he's been at, he loves school. He loves his teachers. He enjoys spending time with his friends. He loves his friends. If he's your friend, he will be so loyal. Just there. Got it, man. So hold that off the top of the room. Oh. So years ago, when Tipinet was first invited to go to a blind foundation camp, there was, I can't even remember his name now, but he came up from Palmerston and he said, oh, there's this great camp that Tipani can go on. He goes up to Topor, and, but he goes without me. And he was only nine. <laughs> He's far too young. No, 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 he, he can't do that yet. Then we can start an army. Yeah, we can start. And then he turned up on my doorstep and said, so I have these forms here for Tipani to go to the Blind Foundation camp. And I was, no, no, no. So we sat down and started talking. And he said, what do you want for your children? Not Tipani, what do you want for all your children? What do you want? What's your vision for them? Well, I want them to be independent and happy. And he's right, right there. What's the first thing you said? Independent. This is an opportunity for him. Let him start becoming independent. Yeah. And he came back from that camp and he's crying. And I said to him, do you need to talk to me about what actually happened on camp? Is someone mean to you? Or... He said, oh, no, 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 I just, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I just really didn't want to come home. <laughs> As a single mum, I never have one-on-one -on -one time with the kids, and I feel like they really, really need that. So a few years ago, I started having a mum a day. Take the day off work, take the kid out of school, and just do stuff and give them time where they can just like talk and there's not other children screaming over them. Not just with him, but with all the children, it would be easy to kind of take over. It's easier to just do it yourself, eh? Yeah, it's a bit more time consuming when you have to let them figure it out for themselves. I can't really see the dot of it. Probably the most important thing to teach them was independence. I wanted them to just be able to do everything that all the other children were doing at the same age. There are things that take longer and you have to figure out different strategies. There's a couple of bits that you've missed. Have a feel around where you were. Ah. And I can see four pieces. One. So, yep. Wait, um, is this one? Yes. There are some really difficult ones because it's grey on grey. I just felt one. Yeah? 
Maybe just move a little bit slower so you don't flick them when you get to them. Keep going. Maybe to your left. Good, that's two. One more? Yep, one more. Come towards me. Good spotting. Okie okay, dokie okay, boys, I'm going to go through the rules all about when you're out on my go-kart track, okay? So when we're out there and we're racing around the go-kart track today, if at any time we get stuck in the tyres or against anything on the go-kart track and we cannot move, our hands and feet must stay inside of our go-kart at all times, okay? And then while we're slowed down, I'll get that person out and going again. There's no time frame, but you know, you just you're told that they're going to go blind, and you just you don't know how long it's going to last. I just really wanted him to experience driving something with an engine before he lost his vision. Okay, Mahia, we're going to pop that on now, so you need to pull it down. Good man. Passes in. Oh, this is maybe too tight. Too tight? Do you want to change it to a different one, or you're happy? I'm happy. I haven't had a lot to do with vision impaired kids until I started working here, and then I met Mahia. Lane asked me if he'd be able to drive because naturally with his uh, sight issues, uh, he may never get to drive a car. Seatbelt on. So we thought, well, we'll give it a go. And then we've just progressed from there. And um, it's just awesome. He's always getting better. And that's the biggest thing. It's, it's awesome to see. We, I love seeing them grow. Right. We came here one time and he kept getting stuck on the same corner. And you just shut everything down yep. and changed the entire track around to, to benefit him. Yep. And I just thought, man, that is super cool. You just don't get that everywhere. He did not start like that. It is really exciting to watch his progress and confidence. It's cool. I deliberately actually modified my track to actually give Mahia a challenge because he memorises the tracks. My last track, he memorised it so he could drive it without even seeing it because he knew where the corners were. So I modified it to actually give him a little bit of a challenge and he hasn't had an issue with it. I think that's the key, is having support from other people and other organisations. It's, it's awesome. Is there enough time just to fit everything in? They are really active and they're really interested in lots of different things, so they want to do everything, and I can't, I just can't fit it all in. Yep. I don't have the income that a two-parent income family would have. Wait, Tia, I'm going to play a game on touch. Uh, touch. no. Uh, no. Yes, we can. No, normal. we're leaving. No, we're leaving. Why? So I try and do my best in that regard. I think they do quite a lot. I actually think they're quite lucky. That means I'm wearing your belt, OK? Originally, I was told that Tipene would benefit from going to see an OT, occupational therapist. That's where I was sending him. It was $85 for every session. And then when we went and had a look at jiu-jitsu, I thought, oh, so I could spend $85 on the whole term and get two sessions a week. Not only did I sign up the boys, I signed up all of them. What did you get for your birthday? Um, a Thor costume. A Thor costume? Yeah, with um, a hammer and a helmet. Did you bring a birthday cake? No. Three, two, one. Back. Ah, 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 ah. On three, one, two. They're learning a really amazing martial art. They are a part of a really awesome club, so it's kind of like a whānau outside our whānau. Go. Go forwards. Mahia, forwards. Blaze, hurry up. Go, Tommy. Escape, Mahia. Hip escape. Setting up. It's taken Mahia a lot longer. You know when they're doing demonstrations, he can't actually see, so he relies heavily on what Greg does 
returning him. But it's good. No! I, I got oh. this guy. Right, give your hands a rub. Reach for the sky. Reach, reach, reach. Sit your bottom into the middle of the chair. Right up to all fingers. And now, can you remember your finger numbers? Music is a really big part of our life. We love music and we have music on pretty much all the time. So, number? Number one. And where's number three, right hand? I thought when the boys lose their vision, if they can create their own music, that's food for their soul, and they'll be able to have that all the time. You find which one you're up to. Music is just automatically joyful, so I wanted them to have that. That's the one you're talking about, isn't it? Yes. OK, should we do that one? So we're going to go from right hand down to the left hand, right? Okay. Try again. C, C, down. And now what are we going to do? With Mahia, it's in him. Music is just in Mahia's being. Two beats. He might find it a little bit difficult to have structured lessons, but once he's got it, he's got it and he's good. Well done. Thank you. You happy? Yeah. See you next time. So, remember how you hit it last week? Yes, got to hit it over towards the yellow pole. 660 is legally blind. Tepany sits around 624. Just the ball, eh, and not the tee. Yeah. Yeah, Tepany's never learned Braille. He doesn't really need to use a cane at the moment. It would help sometimes, but he won't use it. He's 13. No. Well, when I hit it, it could land in front of me, and I'll have no idea where it's gone. I might hit a good one, and I'll still have no idea where it's gone. Yeah. And then you can do a full swing, actually. Good boy. Excellent. The majority of the time, I've probably hit it in the wrong direction, but I've still hit it. So as long as I'd known that I've hit it, then that's good. Full finish position. Sometimes you're just slowing down a little bit on the way through. That's it. Good. Ever since he started school, yeah, always really struggled socially because because people were mean to him. And there's been times where children will, I suppose, realise that he doesn't have the peripheral vision, and they've taken that opportunity and used it to sneak up and hurt him, and then run away, and you know, like it just turns into a game. With everything that happens to him, I just keep thinking, hopefully, he will just grow resilience. You're going to have to go to white tees out for this one. These ones, slightly taller one. Hopefully, they'll be easier to find. Oh, close. And what sort of things about here do you like to do? Rugby and soccer. Well, how do you know when they're passing the ball? Yeah? Um, it's white. So you, what do you just, what do you follow? It it looks like a flash to me. So do you follow it or do you back away from it? Follow it. Twenty one. Ah! 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 It's so stressful. <laughs> Going somewhere for the first time. It's high stress for us. He's pretty good. He'll go around with a cane. One of us will go around and point out the dangers. You know, there's a death drop there or there's a sharp corner here. But he'll go around a few times. Next minute, he's running and we're all having heart attacks. But he's a seven-year-old boy. Can't stop him. He's had a few broken bones. <laughs> Our ophthalmology geneticist said what it probably is, 
is I will have a mutated gene and the father would have had the same gene. And so together it's just a real shame. I've had to learn extra information so that I can find strategies or adapt things to suit them so that they can function easier or I can support them in coming up with their own strategies. And I prefer that, actually, that they come up with their own strategies. Because that way I know it's going to work. Wow, this looks great. Lane works consistently for her children. She's put herself aside in her life now, and everything is for her children. She's playing mum and dad all in one little ball, and that's a hard job in its own. Somehow, amongst the boys and their low vision and everything else in her chaotic life, she finds a balance and she makes it work. I don't know how, but she makes it work. I'm grateful for all the people in my life. I'm grateful for the love and support that I get from everyone, whether it's my whanau, whether it's my mahi, whether it is friends, organisations that we're engaged with. I wish for all of the children, for them to be really happy in their adult life. And I think with happiness is connections and relationships. So what I get scared about is that maybe they might not find a partner in their life that will love them as much as I do. Because, you know, you love your own children and you'll do anything for them, but when you think, other people are prepared to go out of their way and way out of their way sometimes to do something for your child. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're very blessed. was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.